In today's video, I am comparing The Sims 2 Open for Business with The Sims 4 Get to Work Retail. Newsflash, The Sims 4 disappoints again. I have spent hours and hours meticulously creating my Sims 4 world, which includes many different shops that my Sims own and run. This is core to the way that I enjoy playing The Sims. I know it's not for everybody, but if you enjoy retail play like I do, you're probably very disappointed by The Sims 4 retail. And in this video, I want to try and illustrate the things that are wrong with it and the things that The Sims 2 Open for Business did right. Now I will give The Sims 4 credit where it's due, if I can find anywhere it's due. There is one particular issue that is basically game breaking for me in The Sims 4 and makes it almost impossible for me to play retail stores. I am so incredibly disappointed. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and go into the game. We're going to start with The Sims 2. Here we are in The Sims 2 and this is my custom grocery store that I built for my custom neighborhood. The owner of my grocery store is arriving here to open up. Inside we have a bunch of different items for sale. Things work a little bit differently in The Sims 2 when it comes to groceries so many of these items are actually decorative and not functional. If I have a playable sim that comes to the store and they want to buy groceries they would go over to this display or the free freezers in the back and they would buy 600 simoleons worth of groceries or something like that take it home and it would fill up their fridge. But I also sell these decorative items to my sims and if they purchase them then I use them to decorate their homes and put in their cabinets and things like that. So when you have a customer arrive in your store they may start looking at an item and then you could have your sim go do a basic sell which will encourage the sim to buy the item. Sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't. If you have a customer that just walks in and they're looking around, you can go, uh, may I help you? And he's asking to show item. So then my sim, he's asking where the cereal is. So then my sim showed him where the cereal is and he's gonna go browse over there. And I heard a sound that means that one of my sims has purchased something. She's swooning over another sim. So I'm gonna go and be cashier now. And you can see that whenever you have a sim purchase an item, they put the item in their little shopping bag and they go line up at the cash register. You can either have an employee check them out or you can check them out yourself. Right now, Anna is the only one who works here in the grocery store. Um, so she has to do all of the sales and the check, the being the cashier. And then they hand over their money to the cashier and then they leave the lot with their new item. So there is a lot more to open for business, but these are the basics of how it works. If we were to hire a, an employee, we could assign the employee different jobs such as restocking or being a cashier or cleaning. They don't just do general work, you can actually give them specific tasks. When an item is out of stock, you can have your sim go and restock a specific item. And our business is now rank one. And you have to keep an eye on your customers. Now we have another customer here who's ready to ring up. Now this customer is looking at his watch because she's so slow at the register. They will get mad, throw their stuff down and leave if you don't check them out fast enough. You'll also notice that the customers go around to different areas of the store to browse for items. They don't just all gather in one place. And I'm saying this for a reason, which you're gonna see in The Sims 4. Now, after a sim makes a purchase and leaves the store, they actually have the items that they purchased in their inventory. So I've just loaded up Gabriel's household and Gabriel is a sim that we just saw in the grocery store purchasing an item. Whenever I go to his inventory, I have all the items that he has purchased in town. At the grocery store, he just bought a bag of chips and a box of cereal. Now I can take these items out of his inventory and place them in his kitchen because he chose to buy these items from my other Sims. He also went to the bakery recently and purchased a pie, two individual pieces of pie, and a freaking wedding cake. I guess he wants to get married soon. This is one of my favorite parts about The Sims 2 Open for Business is that when your other Sims come into the store and buy things they actually buy them and then when you go to their household you can look in their inventory and see all the things that they purchase and this is really fun especially if you have things like furniture stores and home decor because your sims can go there and choose what they want to purchase for their homes and you'll always be surprised when you get back and see what they've bought now let's talk about home businesses. It is so easy to have a home business in The Sims 2. You just create your home and business 
a lot however you like it, pick up the phone and choose open home business. Meet my Samaravi, who for some reason is in his swim trunks. Anyway, this is his home business. On the bottom floor here, this is his appliance store that he runs. So we sell uh, most of the appliances that are available in the game. And then upstairs, we have his apartment. So this is where he actually lives up above the store. Over here is another apartment that he rents out that's not part of the store. And now we've got some customers in the shop. So it works just exactly the same. He's gonna come down and do a basic sell. So he can do basic sell. And eventually as he gets better at doing sales, he'll be able to do more interactions with the customers. And right now he can practice on and basic sell. It works exactly the same as a regular business, except the Sim also lives on the lot. So this is sort of a multi-purpose lot. And you really have no restrictions in The Sims 2 open for business. You can basically sell almost anything in the game on any lot. Now one drawback to the home business situation is that whenever you are playing a household, you cannot direct that household to visit the home business and shop there like you can a strictly community lot business. But there are mods to get around that so it's not that big of a deal. You can hire employees for your home business just like you can a regular business. And there's really no difference except for your sim lives on the lot. Running a business in The Sims 2 is so much fun. It's so rewarding. You basically have free reign to be as creative as you want. Make it make all kinds of, kinds of different shops. You can also have restaurants, bars. You can even have things like clubs that charge an entrance fee. Here we are in Blue Water Village. This is Malcolm Landgrab and he is arriving at Club Don which is a nightclub that he owns. So if we go inside, we can see that there's a little machine right here. We're gonna, st we're gonna set the price. This is a way for us to charge a cover charge for Sims to enter the club. And this is one way that you can earn money from a nightclub. I'm gonna choose 10 simoleons as a cover charge for anybody who wants to come in. We're gonna start charging customers. We also have an employee here. So our employee arrives as soon as we open up the shop and then we can click on him and choose management. And we can do a lot of different things with our employees. We can change their wage, lay them off, set a uniform for them, send them home for the, for the day, have them cook for us, fire them or assign them duties. So I'm gonna assign this sim here to be the bartender. And it looks like our customers are starting to arrive. So they will stand here and think about if they want to purchase the cover charge or not. I can have Malcolm go and do a basic sell on them and try to convince them to pay that charge and come on in the club. Once they're inside, they can purchase drinks from the bar, which is another way we will earn money. Okay, that Sim decided he was gonna come in, so he paid the cover charge and he's in. Now they will pay this charge every hour that they are inside the club. And you could do this for other types of lots, like maybe a skating rink or an arcade or something like that. Something that doesn't sell traditional products that you want to charge your sim an entrance for. You could even have things like museums and art galleries. Really, you have no restrictions in The Sims 2. It is awesome. Malcolm's business here is currently rank two. So you can check your business information here. You can check your current cash flow for the day and you can check on your employees, make sure they're fairly paid because if they're not fairly paid, they will quit and walk out on you. You can also check customer loyalty to see who your most loyal customers are and you can check your business perks. So as your business gains rank, you will get different business perks that you could use. And there are a whole bunch of them. You can have connections, which basically gets you power networking and perception, which lets you manipulate your customers if you get all the way to the top cash. So every one of these are just a cash prize that you can get for your Sims, going all the way up to the Will Wright grant. You can also get wholesale discounts. This is especially good if you sell expensive items in your stores like appliances or cars. And motivation. You're the master of getting people psyched up so you can really uh, sell your items. You're influential towards your customers. I usually choose these based on the type of sim that is running the store. Poor Malcolm, we're gonna give him the Letourneau prize. Malcolm is also the owner of Electronic Superstore, which I have switched over to, and his employee is here. We're gonna assign her uh, to be cashier because Malcolm likes to focus on the sales himself. A couple things you cannot sell is you can't sell phones and you can't sell alarms like burglar alarms and fire alarms. 
and you can't sell the retail uh, community lot speakers either. Pretty much everything else though is fair game. Another really cool thing about Open for Business is that if you don't want your sim to have to come in and work at the store every day, you can hire a manager to run the store for you and then you can just sit back and collect the money. Now the sim that you hire as a manager has to have a certain level of skills. Only employees with five talent points are eligible for promotion. So a gold badge gives three, a silver badge gives two, and a bronze badge gives one. They can get badges in things like sales, uh, stocking, or cashiering. So once they get at least five points, then you can promote them to manager, and you can just stay at home and just check in every once in a while. As for hiring employees, it's really easy. You just go to the phone and select business, hire employees for a community lot business. Then you'll get a list of all the sims that are currently available to hire, and you will get to see their current talent badges and their current skills and how much their salary requirement is. You can also see if they have a current job. So if you don't want to take somebody out of a current job. So this sim right here, Brianna Custer, she has a bronze talent badge in cash register, a bronze talent badge in sales, and a bronze restocking talent badge. So she would be a very good hire. You can also have your sim's family members work in the store just by sending them to the store and having them work. It's really easy. So these are the basics of open for business and I I think you can see if you enjoy this kind of gameplay why this is so much fun. Not only does your sim earn money by selling things to other sims, but you get to see your other sims autonomously come in and purchase things and take them home. If you have a pet store, your playable sims will even purchase a pet on their own. And then when you get back to their household, the game will prompt you and ask you if you'd like to keep the pet that they purchased or not. So that's really fun. I always like to see what type of pet my sims pick out. Really the possibilities are are unlimited. I like to do all kinds of different stores and eventually I hope to in my custom neighborhood to have shops selling every single item available in the game. Unfortunately I have found this type of gameplay to be almost impossible in The Sims 4 which is very disappointing. So let's go take a look at The Sims 4 so I can show you what I mean. Here is my supermarket in The Sims 4. <laughs> it's obviously based on my Sims 2 version and while much more beautiful to look at, it's not nearly as functional. The owners of my grocery store are Terry and Melissa Green. Terry unfortunately has been a victim of a recent bug in the game where NPCs constantly give your Sims fake news and they think that someone's dead and they have a sad mood lit for like 12 hours. I really wish they would fix these bugs. Now one thing I'm gonna say is that I've used a lot of custom content and one of the best things about The Sims 4, one of my favorite mods, is the cooking overhaul by Seriously Sims. That makes all of these items usable. So anytime your sim purchases one of these items and takes it home, these are actually ingredients and foods that they will use and they have to have these to cook different recipes. So there's like boxes of pasta. If your sim buys this, they will take home a box of pasta that they can use to make macaroni and cheese. I love this. And this is one of the reasons that I started playing The Sims 4 again is whenever I found this mod and I thought, this is amazing. This is gonna make all of my retail dreams come true. If only it could, if only it could because we have a major problem. And I'm gonna show you what that is in a second, but first let's just get some more basics down. So right now I have taken out all of the mods uh, in my game, except for in MC Command Center and the mods that are necessary uh, for the cooking overhaul. So we're gonna get to see how everything works vanilla, but even with mods, the major problems still are not fixed. Whenever your sim gets customers, which there are a lot of customers in the store right now, they come in and they basically just congregate around your shelves. I find it very annoying how they don't spread out. Like in The Sims 2, your Sims will go to different areas in the store. These Sims just seem to congregate around one area, standing there like idiots, until one of them decides to buy something. Okay, so when your customers come in and they're ready to buy something, you get this pop-up that says, what choice, what value, I'm ready to buy when you get a chance to ring me up. And then you can go over and click on a customer and choose ring customer up, which I can't do for the customers that were already ready to ring up whenever I loaded the lot, so they're gonna get mad and leave. Um, okay, this is something I haven't observed before, 
before, but here's a bug for you in real time. So that's not working properly. Um, this guy over here, since he just came in after I loaded the lot, I am able to ring up customer there. So my sim will go, so I'm just gonna ignore the other people just for the purpose of this video. So my sim will go over to him and pull out his little tablet. All right, he'll ring him up. No, the sims do not go to the cash register. The cash registers are not used for anything other than management purposes. When your sims purchase something in a store, they just stand there until your sim comes over to ring them up with the tablet. And I have found in a big store like this, it's very difficult to run it with just a single sim. And I've even have his wife in here helping and it's still getting like crazy hard to keep up with everybody. So then the sim buys the thing off the shelf and leaves. Looks like we have another sim over here who's ready to buy. So we'll go ring her up. And this is just basically how it goes. And then you can have your sims uh, restock items and things like that. You cannot hire family members to work in the store um, without mods. So I have a mod in which I have hired Melissa as an actual employee, but I don't have that in right now. So I'm just sort of directing her to go around and work. That potato costs 21 simoleons, dang. <laughs> That's an expensive potato. We've got quarantine prices going on in here. Um, basically, you just have a lot of standing around, which I could live with, okay? I could live with all of these issues I've showed you so far. I could live with not using the cash register. I could live with the Sims, like, ganging up around one single shelf as soon as they walk in the door. If it weren't for this one big problem, which I'm waiting for it to happen so I can show it to you. In the meantime, I'm going to show you what we can do with the cash register. So the cash register, we can set store prices only when the store is closed. And this is basically the markup that you want on your items. If you want to sell stuff for cheap or really expensive, you can set employee uniforms. You can purchase advertising, which is really cool. And this is a new feature that we didn't have in The Sims 2 open for business. So you can do like a TV ad, a web campaign, a uh, short term or long term. So I think that's a really cool feature. I will give The Sims 4 credit there. You can manage employees. So when you do that, your sim will walk over to the cash register and this is pretty much the only time they actually use it. You're having some serious like lag from when I tell a sim to do something till the time they actually do it. Now I have mods in my game whenever I'm not making a video that fix this, but it's really annoying, especially for people who don't use mods. Um, I mean, it's just almost unplayable. It's so bad. So anyway, when you go to manage employees, you can choose an employee to hire from a pool of six different sims. And these can be townies or other playable sims, I believe. I could be wrong about that because I don't really hire my other playable sims yet. I haven't made it to that state, but right now we just have a bunch of townies you can hire. So you choose one. Um, do you want to hire? Yes, we'll hire Darren here. He will arrive for his first shift the next time the store is opened. So we'll actually have to, I guess, close down the store and reopen it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to close the store. We're going to clear everybody out. It's taken a really long time. Okay, never mind. Our, never mind. We don't want to close the store. No, don't close the store. Okay, so I closed the store even though I didn't have to because the employee did actually show up. Um, but you do get these little financial reports, which I find very helpful. I really like these. It tells you how many items you sold, um, the wages that you paid, and your net profit. And it also shows you your restocking fees. So we made 722 simoleons during that run. The grocery store is very profitable. Now that we've closed, I'm going to reopen. Another thing I do like about The Sims 4 Retail is that if you click this and choose Transfer Retail Funds, you actually have a separate budget for your household and your businesses. So I like this as well. You can transfer money to your business and you'll use that for restocking uh, or any purchases that you need to make in the business. So here's how that works. Currently in our retail store, we have 3,800 in the budget. We have 69 in our household. So we wanna transfer 500 from our household to our retail. Okay, so that adds 500 more to the retail budget. We can also manage our employees by clicking on them, choosing Manage Darren. We can promote our employees, which I really love this. Um, this is another really cool thing about The Sims 4 Retail is being able to promote our Sims to higher positions. We can also demote them if we want to. We can criticize them, check up on them, um, allow them to clock out early 
praise them and fire them. We can also design a uniform specifically for the sim. We can also assign work tasks. So we can have him, right now his task is to answer customers' questions and we can also have him ring up customers. So that's what I'm gonna do because that's what we need the most help with. While you are at your store, you have this little info panel here where you can see today's finances, um, your price markup, you can manage your employees from here, you can view your shift summary, um, employee uniforms, so you can do all that stuff right here as well. And you can also see your business perk points. There are different business perks that you can purchase, and these are anything from, you can get my first simoleon, which is something I really like, That that's kind of a carryover from The Sims 2. Um, a provocative pedestal unlocks a new pedestal object to display items for sale. So there's just a stunning sign, snazzy shirt, register of tomorrow, it just goes on. These are just different perks that you can get. Um, and of course, the more expensive they are, the better they are. Here are the Sims all just coming straight in. They all come straight in and just cluster right here. I would really like to see my Sims browsing around the shelves, my customers browsing, or at least going to look at items in different areas of the store, like spreading out more. I find it highly unrealistic that every single customer is just gonna stand right here. Like they're just standing there. I don't. I don't even know what to do. So since we don't have anybody buying anything right now, I'm gonna change Darren's task to restock. Look at this. This is ridiculous. They're just standing in a pile. <sighs> Okay, and I did assign Darren to restock sold items, and unfortunately, he is not doing that. He is just standing here. Um, his work task is to restock, but he is not restocking anything, so that's also a problem. Obviously, something is going on. Nobody has purchased anything in several hours since I reopened the store. They're all just standing around. Um, this is very buggy, and this isn't even the big problem that I have. Oh my god, I don't know how anybody can play like this. The lag, I guess this is the simulation lag because I have a mod that fixes the simulation lag and this doesn't happen in my personal game. But right now, every single thing that I tell a sim to do, they just stand there and lag for like 10 minutes before they do it. <sighs> not looking good, Sims 4. You are not looking good. So another thing I want to point out that you can do in the Sims... Uh, for is once you've greeted a customer, then you'll have more interactions that you can do with them for business, like answer questions or discuss shopping preferences. Um, so you do have more interactions you can do that may or may not help them uh, make a purchase, I suppose. This customer just got mad because we were taking too long to ring him up and he left and he is angry. So your customers, just like in The Sims 2, will get upset if you don't ring them up fast enough and leave. So this sim here is one of my playable sims in my rotational family. So I play all the families in the world. Um, some of the Sims in here are my playables and others are just random townies. So I'm interested to see what my playable Sim is going to purchase. It looks like he's looking at the meat section. I would like to go check him out and I'm trying to go check him out, but because of this lag, it's taking forever. So everything just stops every couple seconds. Wow, this game truly is unplayable without mods. Once again, everything is just stopping for like several seconds. Nobody's moving, nobody's doing anything. Okay, there, he just got his item that he purchased. There we go. So Jonathan just purchased a farmer's choice for 200 simoleons. Okay, so here's where my big, big problem comes in with this retail system. Here we are in Jonathan's household. He's back home from the grocery store and I'm so excited to see what he might've bought from my other Sims. Oh no, guess what? He didn't buy anything because none of that was real. This is my biggest problem and the reason why I cannot play The Sims 4 right now. I am so incredibly angry about this and I don't understand why it works this way. The Sims 4 was obviously not created for players like me. I like to play multiple households who run businesses and buy things from each other because I find it enjoyable to let my Sims have some autonomy in their lives and see what kind of things they're gonna purchase. So he actually purchased a package of meat at the grocery store 
sure. So I would have come to his household, opened up the package of meat, and he could have cooked it for dinner for his family. But look, there's nothing in his inventory because this is a simulation of a simulation. The Sim didn't really purchase anything. Even though the Sim running the business got the money for the purchase and the item disappeared off the shelf, where did it go? It didn't go to the Sim who purchased it. I, I don't know where it went. Let me tell you, I didn't figure this out until I had already built my supermarket. I spent hours building my supermarket, filling the shelves, creating the perfect family to run the supermarket, then creating other families in my neighborhood who would go and buy things from the grocery store. Now, if I go to switch to this household and send them there as the active family, of course, they will keep the things that they purchased right? Because they're the active family. But if your sim, your playable sim from another household comes into a store, purchases an item and goes back home, that item will not be in their inventory. Deal breaker for me. That is a deal breaker for me. I have searched and searched for a mod that might fix this. And so far I've found nothing. This problem in particular is like motivating me to learn how to mod for The Sims 4. Because if I could fix this, then I feel like I could live with all of the other issues. There are mods to fix most of the things that I have a problem with here. But this is a huge issue, especially if you want an integrated economy like I do. Now I know there are a lot of people out there who just play one household or don't care about this. But I know there are also a lot of people out there who enjoy playing very meticulously like I do and would probably find this to be a very big problem. My Sims 2 players out there, let me know how you feel about this. I was so incredibly disheartened and disappointed. I mean, I just... Like, it, it ruins the whole game for me. This ruins the whole game for me. Everything else I can live with, I can try to fi find fixes for, but this ruins it. It's not real. It's, it's like nothing is real. Nothing is real. The The retail system is poorly done, poorly implemented, and needs so many fixes. Did you see how smooth everything ran in The Sims 2? Your customers came in, they purchased things, your Sims checked them out, restocked the shelves, you had all of your options, all of your freedom and creativity. In The Sims 4, you are just so restricted, and there's, there's more. There's even more than what I've shown you here. For one thing, the number of items that you're not able to sell is too damn high. Let's go look at a couple of my other shops. Here is Jeanette McGuire. She is the owner of my local pet supply store. I started to say pet store, but we all know that's not possible in The Sims 4. So it's a pet supply store. Inside the pet supply store, I have as many of the pet supplies as I possibly can for sale. I also have some custom content, uh, decorative food and things uh, that I got from around The Sims 4. So I have all of these cat condos and things um, available for sale, toy boxes, treats, bowls, and then we have some litter boxes. Now here are some complaints I have with this type of store. First of all, you can't put litter boxes on shelves. You can't sell individual toys. For example, if I just wanted to sell a cat dazzler, this will actually not go on onto a shelf. Um, the number of things that will not go onto shelves, also too damn high. So I'd have to just leave this out on the floor, which I'm running out of floor space from all the stuff I can't put on a shelf. Now I can actually set it for sale, so that's not true. I can actually set it for sale, but if you can't put it on a shelf, you're just gonna have a floor full of toys, which is ridiculous to me. I wanna be able to put these on a shelf even, I can't even put them on an OMSP or anything. I haven't been able to figure it out. Now I could live with that because I can still sell the toy boxes, right? So I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is that we cannot sell hamsters in our pet store. That's right, you cannot sell the hamsters and the hamster cages and you also cannot sell aquariums. I can observe, feed, play with, talk, whatever, but you cannot set these for sale. That was very disappointing to me because because I like to sell small pets like hamsters and fish in my pet supply stores. It is what it is. I could still live with this even if my Sims actually purchased the things they purchased whenever they came into my other Sim owned stores. And finally, let's talk about clothing stores in The Sims 4. What? My Sim is pregnant? Story progression is working in this safe because I had no idea this Sim was pregnant. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. Um, excuse me while I get really excited for my Sim, although I'm probably not gonna be able to play her because of the aforementioned game-breaking issue. 
See, now I'm just disappointed all over again. Okay, well, anyway, Olivia Bryant here is the owner of the clothing store in town. At first, I thought I really liked the way the clothing stores worked in The Sims 4, but as I played them, I realized I don't like it one single bit. It is a really cool idea that you have your mannequins here and you dress these mannequins, then your Sims can come in and they can purchase the outfit. So that's that sounds really cool, right? Now you can only have, I think, 10 mannequins. So I had to get a mod to unlock the number of mannequins I'm able to have so that I could have more than like one set of clothing available. So I wanted to do party outfits, athletic, sleepwear, outerwear, and just normal clothing. So I had to get a bunch of mannequins for that. But still the mannequins only have a single outfit on. But I would really like the ability to just click on a mannequin and instead of just purchase outfit, to be able to create your own outfit as a as a customer. So one thing I'm learning with The Sims 4 when I'm playing around with retail is there's restrictions everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are restrictions. You don't have the freedom to create like you do in The Sims 2. I really liked in The Sims 2 clothing store how you would just go up to a rack and choose buy clothing and then you would it would basically open up create a sim or a version of it. So you could choose from all the available clothing and buy whatever you wanted. This in The Sims 4 is more realistic, but I think it would be even more realistic if you could have like shelves and you could choose which clothing was going to be stocked into those shelves or something like that. It, it could be improved in so many different ways. Oh, Sims 4. What can I say? I was really excited to try out retail and it disappointed me greatly. While there are a few things that I do like about The Sims 4 retail, for the most part, the things that are good cannot possibly make up for the failures. The retail system was obviously just slapped together and tacked on to get to work without very much thought given at all. It is unfinished, it is buggy, and it has so many just like so many issues with immersion it feels like a simulation of a simulation none of it is real when your sims purchase things they aren't actually purchasing things and that is just a big problem for me because i want realism in my game and yeah i know it's a game it's not going to be a hundred percent real but for god's sake when my sim when i see a sim purchase something with my own eyes i would like for them to have actually purchased the thing so anyway i'm sorry i'm getting very worked up over this because it's very upsetting to me. Once I discovered this problem, I have basically been unable to play. I've tried to find solutions and I haven't been able to find anything yet. And I'm sure you guys can see how awesome The Sims 2 Open for Business is because it had an entire expansion pack devoted to it and it was so fleshed out and worked so well. I really wish that they would have taken more cues from Open for Business in The Sims 4 or at least tried, at least not half-assed it and just left this unfinished finished mess for us to try to pick up the pieces. So leave a comment down below and let me know how you feel about retail in The Sims 4 and how you feel about The Sims 2 open for business. I would love to hear your uh, take on that. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot. In The Sims 4, you can't have home businesses, okay? Don't let me forget to put that in there. There's no way to have a home business. So yeah, leave me your comments down below. Let me know how you feel about these issues. Let me know if you how you play retail. Have you found any fixes or workarounds or things that you do to make it more enjoyable, I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, my name is Cindy and I will see you with a new video very soon. Thank you so much for watching.